EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us at the foot of the Rockies just west of downtown Denver at Empower Field at Mile High. Just a short time ago, sounds loud enough to reverberate across the Rockies. They're ready for football in Denver as the Broncos get set to do battle with the New York Jets. Back on offense, New York gets set to take over. Now the former Terrapin, this is Ty Johnson. And he's going to get forward for about five, but that may be coming back. What say you, Mr. Referee? Let's go, baby. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Gore, the jet ball well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. So, still 14 yards to go. Second down. Now, Darnold. And he'll get this into the hands of Braxton Berrios. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 15 yards on the play, first down. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. They'll run for the first time with Johnson. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. The play fake, and it's Darnold. And man is Denzel Mims. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 34-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. On first down, it's Gore. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. On the stop that time, it was Josie Jewell. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And he'll be down close to the first down marker as he gets this to the Broncos' 25. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. It's a gain of four there, and it gives them a new set of downs. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. Able to connect with Mims. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. That puts him in excellent position, first and goal after a gain of 19. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that could be pinpoint here. As I was, that's going to be caught by Crowder. It's a Jets touchdown. 
three-yard touchdown pass. And the Jets take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. Quite the drive there to get things started. They took up the bulk of the first quarter, and they end up in the end zone. And I love your last point. Ended up in the end zone. Because a lot of teams like those long drives, especially to keep their offense off the field, right? Keep the ball away from them. But they finished it with a touchdown. That's the exclamation point. Now flip it over defensively. They've got to slow that down somehow, right? Maybe they need to be a little more aggressive. Maybe a few more pressures towards the quarterback. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Now this will make it into the end zone, and it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. The Broncos are about set to go on offense. Lock and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. He's got his 6'5 receiver. That's Tim Patrick. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. They'll run. This is Melvin Gordon. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. From the gun, it's Lock. He'll find Lindsey here. No yardage to speak of whatsoever. Leads to a third down. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily, you pick up the guys downfield and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not and dropped him for no gain. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. And that is incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. The Jets have Braxton Berrios back deep. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. And this will be out of bounds at the one here, the 12-yard line. Back on the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. The ball Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. On second and nine. Arnold toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find his tight end, Chris Herndon, and it's third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Throwing here on third down, Darnold. 
Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he'll only get this to the 17, well shy of what he needed. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Walked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? On is the punter man as he boots this one away. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the Broncos take over, first down and 10. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down, and guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Phillip Lindsay, 61 yards. And the Broncos are an extra point away from tying the football game. What an excellent run. And from the beginning, the defense just looked a little fooled, a little out of position. A little bit frozen, too. Because when you hand the ball inside, you lose sight of it oftentimes as a defender. And your eyes naturally gravitate to the quarterback. And before they realized it, he was often running through the thick of the line while the quarterback faked it and carried it outside. This will make it into the end zone. And Ballantyne going to sit on this one. That'll be a touchback. New York ready to go again offensively. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. From the gun, a run for Johnson. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. He was but not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. The first down carry here for Johnson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Ten yards is the pickup. Good enough for a Jet first down. It's a gain of 10. First down, New York. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. And they'll try the air now with Darnold. But when this ball's tipped and intercepted, picked off at the 48. And they will finally get him, but not until he's all the way down inside the 15-yard line. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. 
at the 13-yard line. After the turnover, here's Locke. On the slant, completes to Sutton. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. And a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker. And you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry? Ball gets tipped in the air. Because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. And he's going to be dropped. Back at the 15-yard line. Jordan Jenkins. Credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. Well, the coverage was tight that time. They allowed the pass underneath to him, but they rallied to him pretty fast, too. Converged on him and got him down. That'll bring up fourth down. So on fourth down, on comes Brandon McManus and the field goal unit for the Broncos. 27-yard attempt. And McManus able to put it through. And the Broncos, the first to grace the scoreboard. It's 3 zip. So a good kick there. They put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But in the NFL, defense is awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the turn. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Either not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. This will make it into the end zone. And Ballantyne going to sit on this one. That'll be a touchback. Now the Jets offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk this is a big decision here. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. If you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. On third down, they'll run with Gore. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Braden Mann now as he'll punt it away for the second time. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. So possession goes over here on the punt, and out will come the offense as they take over. And Denver getting set to take the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there... That can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. A 
throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. He was trying to find Noah Fant, the tight end, but it's going to be second down. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. Back to the air on second down. It's Locke. This is the tight end fan. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. That was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. Locke working out of the gun. Got a man complete. It's Hamler. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Lock now on first down. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. So the pass goes out of bounds, but he was not outside of the tackle box when he threw that. He's got to be careful. You and I both know if it's even close, they're going to give it to the quarterback. They don't want to throw that flag unnecessarily. So if you're just in the area, you're going to be okay. Lock will try again on second down. He's got his big tight end fan. And he'll be pulled down, and now a late flag will come with it. And that's in the area of a face mask, I think. So now factoring in the face mask, here's first and ten. Now lock again. Got Gordon open, completes it. That catch good for only a couple. Out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Two yards on the pickup. It's second and eight. Ball at the 23, second and eight. Again, it's Lock. Left side here, that's the tight end fan. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. He connected on his first. This time it's 39 yards away. The kick by McManus is good. And that will do it for this first half. So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Taken in at the three. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Here comes the Broncos' offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you your do best. Exactly. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Three yards the game there, second down. Brings up second and seven at the 29-yard line. Block now to throw. Open man, he completes it to Judy. 
That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? Not like any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Finding the open man, and that's Tim Patrick. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you can actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. A tale of two extremes. First carry, he went for a bundle. His second goes backward. And how many times have we seen that happen? Because you get that big carry, and you come back, and you're all fired up, and sometimes you force a run a little bit, right? Trying to break off that big carry again, and instead, it works opposite. They'll get a couple yards back, but not more than that. They'll be left with 12 yards to go on third down. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Throwing his lock on third down. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. And that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Lock now on first down. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. The former third overall pick, Quinnen Williams there to bring him down. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. The pressure really ratcheting up. They get the sack on first down, then a near sack. They got to him there just as it was leaving his hand. Yeah, they might need to change their pass protection scheme a little bit, maybe bring another guy into the backfield to help protect the quarterback, because that was awfully close. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked off by Bless on Austin, and he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now, first and 10 at the 41-yard line. He'll set up to throw from the gun. He's got this one completed to Mims. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. The coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? To throw again on second down. Darnold. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because it nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. They're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. So third and two. This quite possibly four-down territory, though, if they're stopped. Well, look at this, a tight end carry. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. It's a game of three. First down, Jets.
And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. And we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So from the 36 now, first and 10. The shotgun snap for Darnold. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking for Brashad Perriman. That'll bring up second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Darnold from the gun. Uh, he'll air this one out deep for Perriman. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. We've seen that the deep ball has been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it. Unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. From the gun on third down, here's Darnold. Throw complete to Herndon. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. And that is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Broncos will take over on downs. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, I've, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen, hey, third down situation, big third down alert, lock in here, fourth down play, make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. Now, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. 10 yards on the pickup. It's second and inches at the Jets' 45-yard line. Shotgun snap and a give to Lindsey. And he's going to get this down close to a first at about the Jets' 40-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I tell you, they didn't give it to him much for the first three quarters, but when they have, he's been efficient. Maybe they ride him more here down the stretch. Yeah, I'm not sure it was actually in the game plan for him to have as few carries as he has, but it might play out really well for them now. As you noted, if they want to ride him down the stretch, he should have fresh legs. Here's a first down throw that's complete. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six at the 37-yard line. On the counter, here's Gordon. And a very similar result again. The Jets' defense once more stopping him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. To throw on third down. Lock. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48-yard line. Quinnen Williams picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Here's Sam Martin now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. 
And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Darnold and the Jets now down 13-7. A minute 55 remaining. Needing to go pretty much the length of the football field as they have it first and 10. Darnold. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. Uh, he's been quiet all afternoon. He may have just come up with a play of the day right there, though. Obviously, it's not the volume in what you get done. It's the quality. And that was a quality catch right there. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now Darnold. He gets it left side to Johnson. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Three yards the gain there, second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Darnold now to throw. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 45-yard line. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. That's exactly what they were looking for. If they get another gain like that, they'll be right there in field goal range. And the tension building. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Faking the give, Darnold. He's going to let it fly. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Normally, you think the tight end is going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. He's back to throw. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw is made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. He'll look to throw. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. So the defense helping him out a little bit here late in the fourth. Dan, you're exactly right. And when you're the one doing the chasing, you'll take a little help from the other guys, won't you? Now it's Darnold. He's got Herndon, his tight end. Darnold's that catch good for only a couple. I'm a little surprised right here. They've got three timeouts left. The clock's running down, and they aren't using them. Those timeouts do you no good at home. Use them now. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. side that's the tight end Herndon complete to Chris that throw good for only a couple it brings up third down they still got two timeouts got to start using them don't they you absolutely have to you save them for this situation but you have to use them Darnold trying to hustle everybody along with the clock moving back to throw and that is incomplete stopping the clock with five seconds to go A.J. Boye on the coverage. So down six, and they know they need this one on fourth down. One last throw now for Darnold. 
And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Broncos will take over on downs. Turnover on down. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And it was a bit of a strange game. They were held scoreless through the entire second half. But their first half output, that's enough to carry them to victory. And that's an odd game to watch, isn't it? Because when we saw the output in the first half, you think to yourself, okay, they've got something working here. They know what they're doing. They'll continue that along. But instead, it's goose eggs in the second half. Fortunately, enough of a cushion and enough defense to carry them home. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Broncos are winners, as we say so long from Denver.